I greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. To our Pastor Amos, God bless you today, sir. To Pastor Jane, God bless you the same. To all other pastors, Pastor Peter, Pastor Peter, Pastor Elizabeth, anyone else that I'm missing, please know that it's not on purpose. Who else is a pastor? All right, and his name is? His name is Pastor, Pastor Lenny. Pastor, Pastor Gatia. Gatia. Yes. Gotcha. All right. Wonderful to have you all here. And I've got a bit of reading to do, so I'm actually going to have you to take your seats while I read the Word of God. Let me say that I have been sent to Kenya to encourage you to fulfill the will of God in your life. This means that I look unto God's word for what God is speaking in his word. He shares particular patterns. If we see the pattern, follow the pattern, then we will be blessed with results. So today I'm going to read from St. John 21 verses 1 through 13. Now, as I read God's word, I want you to see it. I want you to see it. It's a story. It really happened. St. John 21, 1 through 13. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias and on this wise showed he himself. There together, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night, and that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said, Unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast, therefore, 
and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore, that disciple, that disciple whom Jesus loved, saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, unto him, for he was naked, <laughs> and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not too far from land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there and laid the fish thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring up the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and 153, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, come and dine, and none of the disciples Durst asked him, Who art thou? Knowing it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh the bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. The word of the Lord for the people of God. And so I want to talk with you today from the topic, the God of multiplication. The God of multiplication. From the beginning, we see the mind of God. One thing about God, he will not expect you to do something that he has not demonstrated before. He will always model for you. He will always show you so that you can copy how he does things. So if we go back to the book of beginnings, we should see a God of multiplication. Genesis 1 and 11. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. Genesis 1, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas and let fall 
multiply in the earth. Two verses later, 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind. Cattle, cattle, and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. Verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth from trees to animals to human beings God in the beginning God in the beginning established his pattern that anything that he created would always be in the multiplication process. Be fruitful and multiply. This tells you and I that whatever we are involved in must follow the pattern of God. We must be fruitful and multiply. Let's talk about some examples. A man marries a woman. A man marries a woman. They get together. They have little children. They multiply. Now, perhaps they don't have any children. Perhaps they don't have any children. They multiply in love. Something must increase. Another example. Anytime you have a marching band, anytime you have a band, music. If someone is playing music along the street, before you know it, other people join the band and they start walking or marching down the street. It is the natural way of human beings that there, that there should be multiplication. On your job, on your job at work, your boss expects you to multiply to make something. And so I've come to tell you today that the mandate of the church, the responsibility of the church is that the church multiply in some way that church must show growth if that church is following God's pattern that God established in the beginning, that church will grow. And so today, we're going to journey and look at an example of what growth should look like, of what it should look like. We must desire as a church to have the mindset of God. Don't become 
complacent. Don't become lazy. Never say it can just stay the same. That is a dangerous mindset. That's a dangerous way to think. We should walk in this verse. Second Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. We must understand that as God blesses us, we then receive, we then receive so that we can bless others. That's why we have Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, good measure, press down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto you. For with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you. In other words, as a church leader, a church member, if you've got multiplication on your mind, then everything you do will feed into that mindset. You take every opportunity that there will be increase. And so this afternoon, I want to talk from three points. Point number one, the catch. The catch. Point number two, the Christ. The Christ. And point number three, the cast. The cast. So let's talk about it. Point number one. Verses one, two, and three. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias and on this wise he should he himself. Let me stop there. This verse is actually quite revealing. For it's saying that Jesus showed up to show up who he was. And, and I've gotten to the point in ministry, I've gotten to the place in ministry where I just don't show up at any place or every place. When I show up, I want you to know who I am. Now, here is what is important. That when I show up, it's not about who I am, but it's about Jesus Christ. So when I speak, I must speak the words of he who showed up at the Sea of Tiberias. You got to follow the pattern. If you don't follow the recipe, you won't get the result. Verse 2. There were together Simon Peter 
and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth, entered into a ship, and that night they caught nothing. Let me talk about it. The final chapter of St. John begins with the words after these things. We can't ignore that. <laughs> we have to know. What do you mean? By after these things. The text is after the death of Jesus Christ. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Recall that the disciples had lost faith. The disciples have lost their faith. And most of the disciples had operated in fear at the sight of their master being crucified. Jesus had not been seen by many. And his disciples were going back to what they were comfortable doing. So let's say something here. That when you are challenged in ministry, you have to be careful that you don't slip back into doing things that you used to do before. The safe way. The easy way. They were fishing. Professional fishers. I want you to think about this. After being trained in the gospel, they went back. After being trained by Jesus, they went back. Maybe I need to say something right here. Sometimes in a church, you can have people that have been trained by the leader, trained by the Spirit of God, and those members just may go back. Jesus did not give up on the disciples because they ran back. Remember that. Now, in going back, there is not going to be multiplication. Mm -mm. You can turn, you cannot turn your back on God and what you used to be in the kingdom and expect everything to go wonderfully. There was no multiplication, only division and subtraction. 
So Jesus shows up. He began a work in them. <laughs> and he was not going to leave the earth until they got the lesson right. I don't know about you. I'm so glad that Jesus never gives up. That if he began a work in you, he's coming back to complete the work. And when you go fishing for the sinner man, for the sinner man, for the sinner woman, for the church leader that left the church, you have to keep in your mind that Jesus be going to work with them and he's able to bring them to complete that work. That's why we cannot give up on anyone. So look at this. Notice, 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 see that Peter, Simon Peter, takes the lead. Think on this. The main disciple, the main disciple who denied Jesus is now leading the disciples. Hmm. He leads others back. Because that's where he is. The last time we remember, he was denying Jesus. So that means that if he becomes a leader, if he becomes a leader, he's going to lead people to deny Jesus. Look at the text. He takes them back to a place where he thought it was safe. Let me tell you, the gospel message often multiplies in a place that's not safe. In a place that is not safe. You will be criticized, persecuted, scorned, yet the Bible calls you blessed. To get your mindset that even in the earth, the ground, there is a toiling process. The soil is turned. It's irritated so that there can be irrigation for multiplication. So you've got to be willing to go through something so that you can produce something. My Lord. Hmm. Yet, I want to encourage you. Don't follow Simon Peter. Don't be double minded. God has called you to be stable during this time. So Peter says, Follow me. <laughs> They follow Peter and catch nothing. You, do you think that God 
will cause somebody who denied his son to experience blessings? Oh no, oh no. God gonna show up here. Uh-huh. It would have been totally contrary to God's mindset to have Peter to be a successful leader at this time. You can't deny Jesus and talk about you represent God. So every other people, every other religion, if you don't follow Jesus, you will not be blessed by God. In order to be blessed by God, you've got to accept his son Jesus. This is the pattern in the Bible. Peter denied Jesus three times. And now he has the disciples following him. The disciples are following a denier. This can't remain. This cannot be. You cannot be blessed if you deny Jesus. You cannot be blessed if you are happy to turn your back on ministry and go back where you were before you met Jesus. So let's talk about number two. The, the Christ. Four and five. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, <laughs> but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus, because they didn't know it. They didn't know it because they did not know it. They just did not know. <laughs> they did not know Jesus for themselves. So the silly disciples were following Peter. If you're following Peter, you don't know Jesus. Verse 5. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, he, he didn't call them men. He didn't say men. He didn't say fishermen. He didn't say disciples. Because here's something for you. Jesus will never call you what you are not. If you want honest results, if you want honest, truthful results, you have to start with truth. Jesus calls them children, but he already knows that he's going to take them from children to apostles. He knows what's in them. And so while he recognizes where they are, he's going to take them where he would have them to go. It's a process. N Note that after the failure of these failed fishermen, Failed fishermen can catch fish. Right after you see that they caught no fish, the next verse begins with but. Begins with but. 
In other words, Jesus is saying, I know that you caught nothing, yet I'm going to turn this thing around, and you are going to catch more than you could ever think of. So he's going to take their current situation of fear and failure and show them faith. So, whatever you're going through, whatever point of failure that we may experience, we must give it to God because God can turn defeat into victory. Some way, some way, somehow, God will give you the victory. <laughs> what I like here, what I like here, is that Jesus showed up anyway. <laughs> failing disciples actually failed disciples faithless disciples disciples that had seen him do all sorts of works they had proof they had evidence that Jesus worked miracles. And yet they turned their back. But I say it, Jesus showed up anyway. So we've got to understand that when God has a plan for somebody's life, it does not matter that they are failing right now. God will still step in to save the day, to help them. All the disciples, except John, left Jesus at the cross. Yes, Thomas doubted the reality of Christ Jesus. Peter outright denied Jesus three times. Yet Jesus still shows up. <laughs> In other words, Jesus doesn't take it personally. Jesus does not take it personally. It's not about me. It's about the kingdom. And because I spent three and a half years talking the kingdom, walking the kingdom, living the kingdom, I will not stop until you, Peter, you, Thomas, walk in what I have taught you. Right now, you're walking after a denier. By the time this chapter is finished, you all will be walking you all will be walking after the deity of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is reassuring. It means when people disappoint us, let me tell you what we do. Well, and I mean including me. <laughs> When people disappoint us, 
We take on the burden of the disappointment. That's when you deny faith. We have to learn every day that even though people have disappointed me, I am still appointed, I am still appointed by the kingdom to live according to the kingdom. So you get disappointed for a little while. But then you shake yourself. And you go back to become, to become a fisher of men. And so Jesus shows up. A change is going to take place. A mind shift is going to take place. He stood there. Jesus stood there. And they did not know who he was. But he knew who they were. It's more important that Jesus knows us rather than we knowing about other people. Jesus knows you. He knows all about you. He knows what you're capable of. And therefore, Jesus will always try to pull out destiny and purpose out of your life. He never pulls out your personality. He lets us be transformed by his word so that we decide to change who we're going to be. His job is to pull out kingdom. Pull out the kingdom work that is in you. Jesus, he asked a strategic question. <laughs> Jesus focuses on their focus because you always have to meet people where they are. <laughs> so he could have asked, do you know who I am? He could have asked, how are you guys feeling today? Yet he focuses on, have you caught any fish? Did you catch any fish? What have you done? You're big. You're an adult. You're grown up. You're strong. Did you catch any fish? And their response is no. Let me repeat that you have to meet people where they are. He calls them children. Why children? This also speaks to where they are at. They are like children without a father. They are acting like they have no father. They are children because they still need care and direction. He asks them, have you caught any meat or any fish? Have you caught what you are after? Have you caught what you are looking for? See, sometimes you go after what you want and you keep on missing it. 
And that's when you need to ask God to refocus you so that you can look for what God has for you. What God has for you. And so here you see that they are working their own plan and not the plan of God. Until you seek first the kingdom, you will fail in your search. The Christ, Jesus Christ, the Christ, finds these children in a crisis. And the Christ gives a command. Number three, cast. Verse six, and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. The word cast comes from the word belo, meaning to throw or let go of a thing. Without caring where it falls, until you learn to let go of some things, until you learn to let go of some things, of some things, of some people, of some situations, you will not catch the fish. So I found this beautifully amazing. You see, as long as you obey the words of Jesus, it really does not matter what you do. It's not the way you cast the net. It's not your skill. It doesn't matter how you do it. It matters that you do it. Jesus said, cast the net on the right side. Not on the wrong side. On the right side. Whatever the right side is, that's where you obey God. Now you've got to understand. Understand. They had been fishing. They had cast on the right side. They had cast on the left side. They had cast the net on the back side. They had cast the net on the front side. But because they were being disobedient, be because they had gone back and were following Peter, it did not matter how long they fished, how professional they were, Jesus had to make sure that they failed. When Jesus trains you for a kingdom purpose, you will fail at everything else. You will fail at everything else. Can you imagine Peter taking the net and thinking, I've already cast it on the right side. That was Peter's words. It is at the word of Jesus that that which he spoke in the beginning in Genesis.
Genesis. Remember what we read earlier? That the word was spoken? In the beginning, God said? God spoke and he said, fish multiply? So God knows how to speak to fish and the fish don't question God because they hear the sound of the voice of their creator. So when the fish Lord Jesus, help me right here, heard Peter's voice, they ran away. The fish are not going to obey the voice of someone that denied their creator. That's the power. The moment, remember they did not recognize him. Uh, humanity may not recognize Jesus. But guess who will? Fish will. You talk about catch. And so, when they hear Jesus, when the fish hear Jesus, speak. Jesus says, cast the net on the right side. I'm just going to play with them now. Jesus didn't say, fish, come on the right side. Jesus didn't say, fish, do you hear me? These fish are so in tune with the will of Jesus that they understood. They knew it. Jesus just said, cast the net on the right side. Jesus wants us. The fish are saying, Jesus wants us to go into the net. See, see, fish and cats and dog, cat, they don't debate things. Human beings do. And so at the voice of the creator, the fish understand that they are now going to be caught. If we church preachers and leaders would simply speak the words of God, what Jesus said, the fish will come in the net. See, the challenge is that today, many preachers, many preachers and teachers, pastors, are speaking their own words. And so you, gotta, you have a weak church. You actually have a church that lives doing things against the Bible. Sometimes I ask myself, if they are reading the same Bible, how could they agree with homosexuality? It is because they refuse to speak what the scriptures say about homosexuality. So therefore, they catch a different type of fish. They catch, they catch fish. That's what I wanted to hear. Instead of fish that obey the word of God. Speak the word 
of God. I'm almost done here. Verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Let me stop there. The, uh, the, the first disciple to, to recognize the voice of Jesus was the one that never left Jesus. So he would recognize Jesus. It continues. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto himself, for he was naked. And he did cast himself into the sea. I could read a lot into this. Could it be that Peter in casting himself into the sea was confessing that he needed to be transformed just in the same way that emptiness, empty net was now full. He was empty and needed to be full. So when he threw himself on the mercy of the court, his life changed. I'm going to conclude it here. I've still got some, but I want to wrap it up here and say this. Jesus had to transform the disciples. Because he was soon to leave the earth and return to the Father. And there would have to be left in the earth echoes of his voice. That when they hear the disciples, they hear Jesus. They hear Jesus. Therefore, they hear God. All of you under the sound of my voice, if you are going to experience multiplication, you must speak the word of God. Don't get comfortable where you are. Don't get comfortable where you are. But go fishing. Every day, in your heart, in your mind, wherever you are walking, your message is, your message is, you can follow me because I follow Christ. So you say to people, follow me as I follow Christ. And in that way, there's multiplication in the kingdom and Jesus Christ is edified. Be encouraged, church. No matter what the challenge, your job description is to be fruitful and multiply. When was the last time you invited someone to your church? When was the last time you insisted that a friend meet you at your church? We don't bother fish. We leave fish alone. We've got to go out there. Go. Go ye there for. Go there for a reason.
to increase the kingdom. Only then will you hear, will you hear, well done. God bless you today. Amen.